Welcome, Cardinal fans, to this week's edition of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And both of us have grins from ear to ear. We've got our first victory uh, this season over at Valpo. And, Coach, congratulations to you and your staff. Thank you. Sure made the, the uh, eight-hour bus ride home a whole lot more enjoyable when you can uh, come home with something like that. So, Well, let's talk a little bit about it. You know, uh, and I'm going to start on the offensive side, uh, just looking at the stats and going through everything. Just total dominance, particularly on the ground. You have to feel good about that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm really excited about a lot of things there, and we are as a team, and as we go through it as a staff and look at different things, and our players review the film, you know, yesterday. and. There's just there's a lot of good stuff there, and and maybe one could make an argument that might be might have been our best offensive game that we've had since we've been here. And uh, as far as up and down the line, our quarterback played as good a game as he's ever played. Um, you know, and well, Sean's got some people helping him now. He, he does, and he and he does it. He did a great job the other day of managing the situations and making his plays when they were there to be made, and then you know putting other guys in situations to make big plays for us too, and. And uh, anytime you can have that kind of balance, that's what you strive for, you know. And we were down a couple key players right. uh, on Saturday too, without you know our starting yeah. left tackle, and and uh, Trevor Goforth comes in and does a tremendous job as a redshirt freshman and played every single snap at left tackle and did a tremendous job. And then uh, you know Quentin Riser, uh, we didn't have back on the field yet right. last week, and he's you know one of our one of our guys that can run at receiver and and uh, so you know without some of those guys and, and some other guys stepping into positions and filling those at a really high level and the execution that we had across the board offensively uh, I'm extremely proud of them but as we we talked yesterday is that uh, be careful what you wish for because now they the bar set you know and we know what we can be yeah, absolutely. And, and and we know where we left we feel like we left some points on the table and uh, so you know the and, the and our players are taking the approach that you know, this is the benchmark, and it can never be less from this. And we've always got to strive for to to create a higher level of success. And and uh, so to see them realize that on Saturday, that level of success um, from a production standpoint was tremendous. Now, you know, if they were all sitting here, they'd tell you there's plenty of things that that they feel they could have done better and executed better. And and those are the things we continue to work on. And now, it's consistency. Right. Consistency is the key as we go forward with that group. Well, last week we talked about, and, and you know, I talked to a lot of the parents and stuff after the ball game. They they watched the inside the Cardinal playbook, mm -hmm. and I, I just you know you got to learn how to win. And the good thing is when you win, you get confidence. And what I'm hearing you say today is there's a lot of confidence in that in that room when you go over the film, in the weight room when you're working out. Yeah. It makes all what I what I'm saying is as a coach is it makes all the difference in the world as far as atmosphere. Yeah, you know, it was it was good to see us in. in I told our staff this yesterday morning, and as a head coach, you know you've been there. You you observe a lot of things, and you step you'll, you'll step back from situations just to, to take in the big the big picture of it all. And that was as proud as our players have been after a victory right. since I since we've been here. And uh, you know they they were walking a little taller and with their chests a little bit more puffed out, and, and and that's a good thing, you know, from a confidence standpoint. Now we've got to replicate that every week. And uh, you know that's that's the, their challenge now is to the consistency of it. And you know now you've showed what you can do. Uh, and we're talking still talking about the offense here from an offensive standpoint. Now that's that's the expectation. And uh, can we reproduce that every week? Are we mature enough at this point to continue to take steps uh, like that, like we did on Saturday? Well, here's another uh, thing that I see a big difference in. Yeah, you played without three starters. Uh, you know, Hearns didn't play defensive end. Messer didn't yeah. play your long snapper, which affected yeah. the game a little bit. We talked about that. We'll talk about that in specialty teams. And, you know, you're missing a tackle, you're starting tackle. And a starting wide receiver. And a starting wide four. receiver. So, yeah. but, but in the past, yeah. we couldn't recover from because we didn't have the depth. This yeah. is a sign, when I talk about slowly building a program, mm -hmm. where that makes a difference. Yeah, you know, that in, the, in the past, that's been a, a crutch. That situation would have been a crutch for us. You know, if something bad happens, well, we didn't have this guy or that guy and you know I, I've probably been guilty of it as well as but you human uh, nature yeah absolutely and uh, you know what I was so proud of our team the other day is we talked to them about playing till the final whistle and we had to uh, on Saturday to to get the win and uh, you know there's some things we we need to do better in, in all phases and I know you know you're gonna get a chance to talk to coach Weigel here in just a little bit about some of those things and some of the points maybe we left on the board in that area and 
you know, defensively as we look back on it and we saw in the game, even though we're playing without some guys that we normally have in there, we still got to be able to stop a charge and, and offensively if we can maintain and get one more first down on our last drive, we don't have to be, on, you know, we can run the clock out. So there's some of those things that you always look back on and, and try and figure out, you know, how can we do better on this in these situations and, and learn from it. It's always, as you know, it's a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier to swallow and learn from, you know, coming yeah. off a win you, you bet it is. Uh, than, than the alternative. So, uh, but we're excited about that group. And then, you know, defensively, you know, we feel like we, we did some really good things at times. We played tremendous first and second down defense. And if you weren't, if you were there, you saw it. We were in so many, I, I can't remember, eight to ten, third and eight, ten plus. And we were, we were, we were bad on third down. And, you know, it's, it's no secret. We've got to we got to go play third down. We've got to when it gets to third down, you know our our ears need to perk up and our eyes need to get That's wider. That's about and we need, learning how to win, coach. Exactly. So don't you agree? I, I would completely agree with you. And you know that was our Achilles' heel a little bit. And you know we had a stretch where we played dominating defense. And just like you know the first game, we played dominant defense for stretches during the game. And then. You know, oh, third actually, down. from the second quarter all the way to right. the end of the ball game. Right, and then on Saturday, you know, at Valpo, the the fourth quarter, you know, we're up 20 points, and it's a it's our Achilles' heel a little bit right now is is uh, learning how to play first down and maturing and understanding the situation sure. and and all the dynamics that are involved with it, with you know, the type of offense you're facing, where the sticks are, you know, quarterbacks rolling out and breaking contain, just different things. That we've we've got to uh, get better at there, and we will. We're we're working hard at it right now. Well, the next segment we're going to have the uh, deep or the uh, special team coordinator, uh, Coach Weigel, along with us, and he's going to talk a lot about special teams. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back in the last segment, and we'll, we'll go players of the week, and we'll talk about the McKinley game coming up. Sounds great. My name is Jesse Limekiller, CEO of Belvoir Winery, 110 years in the making. We provide a, a unique experience uh, in that it's a historic building. It's 110 years old. Bring in their own caterers to um, have a nice formal sit-down meal or something that's social and very casual. Um, we let them do basically whatever they want as far as their, their event goes. We have the fountain running and have the gazebo up for all the wedding days and special days out here. I'm Jesse Limekiller, the CEO of Belvoir Winery. Poor Boy Oil Company is and always has been locally owned and operated. We promise convenience and service with small town values. We want you to choose Poor Boy again and again, whether you're looking for a hot cup of coffee to help start your day, grabbing lunch at midday, picking up milk at the end of the day, or heading for a Cardinal game any day. We're here to help you get you on your way quickly. Most stores are open 24 hours, so we're here when you need us. Poor Boy Oil Company. Find us around the Northland, wherever the Cardinals fly. Welcome back to the next segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And I'm with one of my all-time favorite coaches here at William Jewell, Coach Weigel. I, we, he's good people. I, I gave, just gave him a compliment. If I was a young guy, I would want to play for you. And, you know, Jared has the responsibility of talking about the entire team because he's the head coach. But you're the uh, coordinator of specialty teams. And I think you need to throw out some kudos because you've had two games where overall you've done really well. Yeah, we've... Uh... We've, we've done some good things, and, um, you know, that's, that's important. We take that seriously here. We're allotted some uh, extra practice time and whatnot, so we want to make the most of it, and, and it's important. And, uh, you know, we, we, we preach field position, and that helps us both offensively and, and defensively, and that's going to be our approach. So we just try and be as efficient as, as possible and make it fun, too, for the, for the kids. You know, we're going to get out there and get after it on, on special teams and, and uh, have fun doing it and, and be effective. Well, you know, one thing I've noticed, and we talked about this last year, and I even noticed more this year, and you and Jared have uh, been here uh, for probably, what, five or six years I've done it, is that we have more speed on our specialist teams, and that, that makes a big difference when we're talking. You know, people, Coach, really don't realize. We, You know, I just was watching the ESPN. We talk about offense. We talk about defense, blah, blah, blah. But one-third of the game, no matter when it's played or where it's played at, especially teams. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, you can get a little get a little worked up about some situations on there, especially when you get out there on your punt team and you have one snap. It's either, it's either good things happen or bad things happen. And when bad things happen, you end up uh, a lot of times affecting the outcome of a game. So, and it's that way we talk about, uh, you know, it's, it's one snap. 
and it's got it's got to work, or else uh, we're going to put ourselves in a bad situation. And uh, you know, we don't want to do that, that because it has a snowball effect to where, what the offense is going to do, what the defense is going to do, depending on where we are in the on the field. Well, you faced a little bit that Saturday because your long snapper was wasn't there basically, you know, couldn't play, and so you had to put in some guys that are you you know backups. Mm -hmm. uh, that really affects the ball game, doesn't it? Yeah, and the it does. timing of what you're doing. It does. It absolutely does. And, and uh, we know that uh, you know our approach, especially to the you know the field goal and PAT. We're gonna we're gonna kick it. I mean, we put as big a bodies in there and get as much edge as we possibly can. Um, you know, because we have you know Warren with a, you know an all American style kicker back there that uh, we want to kick. Very that. consistent. And, yeah, and um, you know there was we had some unfortunate things there. You know, a younger a younger kid that's going to come along and do great things. But I don't know if, if Saturday maybe he thought the stage was a little too big for sure. him. But but uh, first, you know, first time. At the rodeo. Well, yeah, and and uh, you know he and he had snapped the week before and and, and did right and and um, you know our our op times were great and so I you know you just think about well that's going to be all right but I don't know something that uh, well, Dylan Shamball and mm -hmm. uh, and you know he felt horrible after the game and it's it's not on him we'll get him going you know and get him corrected and and uh, whatnot but then we we replaced him with, uh, with an upperclassman uh, Thomas Sabota who, uh, who snapped before last year a couple times yeah. Right? Yeah, and he does our, our long snapping. He came in and, and uh, you know, got things back on track for us and, and did a nice job. And that's a pressure situation for him, too, because going from a long well, snap absolutely. to a short snap. It's totally different. You know. Now, your punter, your punter's really, I think, having a great year so far. Yeah, Zane Kitchell um, really had a kind of a, a breakout game, got... got uh, he, he was his own worst enemy there for a while, and he was in his own way, um, you know, a couple times in the first game. With, you alluded to the first game. Um, when we gave up that big return, we only had a hang time a little bit over three yeah. seconds. The one up the middle. That yeah. was the only really uh, yeah. poutois we had other than the snap so far in the yeah. special teams. Yeah, and, um, and so he got over himself and averaged uh, 42 and a half yards a punt this week, and that allows our coverage to get down there, and they were run one return for four yards. So, um, you know, all those things uh, work together, and, and uh, he had a, a really nice game. Well, I got to bring up the first game too. Uh, Cook's return on the punt that was spectacular. But the thing I liked about it, it, it looked like a team or a, a group that you'd be coaching as far as enthusiasm and really a team, all eleven guys doing well. I don't know if you guys uh, saw enough on the on the video, but they peeled back and just just leveled some people, made some great blocks, and it was all hustle. If you remember that ball kind of dribbled around, and he picked it up at the last minute. Yeah. Then he made a great run. Yeah, that was, uh, and that was that was an all-out block. It was that's what we call bonsai. We were going after the block, and, right. and uh, you know, with a guy like Thomas back there, you you need to stay active throughout the entire play because you don't know what <laughs> what might happen. Right. And he that ball bounced to him, and and then it was, uh, you know. What's the first thing you look for on special teams for a guy to play special teams? I know that you have different people, obviously the snapper, the holder, the kicker, but I'm talking about guys that are going to be on the special teams that you're going to get down and go down and cover. Uh, what do you look for? Well, it's, it's one area you really need to know your roster inside and out, and, and uh, primarily the biggest thing is trust. Are you, are you going to show up? Because you know you you got to be able to play the next play. Because a lot of those guys are playing right. offense or defense, and and um, you know if if they can't uh, get past that, what may have happened, you know the play prior, then now you're you're going to put yourself in a, in a detrimental. Uh, potentially detrimental situation with those kids so it's it's really a trust thing and that that's really you know we spend the majority of the time on our on our punt team you know because that's that's a snap that uh, you know you gotta you gotta know those guys you gotta know that they're gonna perform and, and do what you need to do and and because uh, you get one blocked and I think it's 83 percent of the time you lose a ball game and if it's blocked and return for a touchdown it goes up in the 90th percentile and, and uh, so that's a real important factor there. Well, we're in the last uh, 30 seconds or so of this segment. I just want to tell you, I've been around here four or five years and see your interaction with kids, and you're so positive. And, you know, you, and you always coach them up. I've never seen you coach them down. So the people who are listening, their parents, grandparents, particularly grandparents, because I'm one, because you know those grand, grandsons oh, yeah. are pretty important, oh, yeah. uh, make a difference. And you do a great job of that here. And I know the kids love playing for you, and we see that every Saturday on special teams. So yeah. thanks for coming along. You bet. Thank you. goes again and Franklin makes it two to nothing on the drive. Now he's got some room and some room to cut back. Oh, what a run. One man to beat. What and that is run. the explosiveness of Thomas Cook Jr. My goodness.
Hi there, this is Kurt McCoy, local owner, Shop Local 365KC. Shop Local 365KC, the home of MFS Design Services. We design websites and we do search engine optimization. We can help you shoot a local video for your event or for your business. And we can also help you with social media consultations. Contact us today at www.shoplocal365kc. Welcome back to uh, Inside the Cardinal Playbook. This segment I'm excited about. I'll learn a little bit about a sport that I honestly don't know very much about, and that's soccer. And Coach Robley, uh, you know, uh, we've got a little background. You know, I was over at Blue Springs when you were playing in Winnetonka, but uh, having uh, have got your four or five games into the season, you got one, uh, the women's team's ranked 13th in the country, and uh, uh, the guys are, you know, uh, again, it sounds like with a couple overtime situations you've had in the past weekend that they're playing pretty solid, too. Doing pretty well. Uh, the women are undefeated right now. We're 4-0. Um, the men are 1-3, uh, lost to the number five ranked uh, team in the nation, and then had a couple overtime losses. Uh, that's part of it. We obviously would want to be a part of the better side of overtime, but um, we're going to have more games like that in the future this season, more games where we're likely going to play overtime. Hopefully we get the, the better of those situations. You know, uh, going to Division Two, and I haven't had a chance to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis like this, so I might just shoot it at you now. How do you how do you like being in Division Two? I've I have talked to almost all the other coaches. You know, I love it. You know, it's uh, it's we're in an extremely competitive conference. The GLVC is one of the best soccer conferences in the nation for men and women, and um, uh, so we know every single game uh, we're going to be in a battle. And every other uh, team in the conference is going to be in battle as well. Um, you know, the men's game, it's literally like tossing a coin up as far as who really is going to get the better of the game. Uh, hopefully we are. But uh, on the women's side, even just to show you the competitiveness of the women's side, I think the most goals scored by any team this past weekend or on Sunday was two goals in a game. So the games were 2-0, 2-1, 1-0, 0-0. From top to bottom, maybe the best conference in all of Division II women's college soccer. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about women's soccer. And I, I told you before we started that the, the Franklin girl is a Truman girl. And of course, I grew up in Independence, and her, uh, her grandfather's on a uh, Hall of Fame thing with me in Independence. And uh, great people, great. But I know her from being the AD and stuff at Blue Spring. She's a, she's a great competitor. She's very competitive. She is a huge asset to the team. Uh, she scores goals, she works hard, she's an outstanding student. Um, so she was a All-American forward for us last year, right. and she was a scholar All-American in the classroom as well, and she's one of our captains. Um, so she's, a, uh, she's very good for the team on and off the field. Uh, we like her. Yeah, you know, I think she really fits William Jewell Moe because of her, you know, she's a very, very good student. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, William Jewell's known for its academics. There's no Absolutely. question about that. And I know all of it, from activities, all the activities feel the same way you do, Coach, that that's, that's a real positive for the university. Uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the boys. Uh, we gave kudos to the girls already. They're 13th in the nation. They're undefeated. But uh, uh, some guys that you might want to name to throw out to, to they talk about a little bit this season that you think have really improved from last year. Well, yeah, we've got three captains on the team, um, Chad Newman and Zane Christensen and Shane Bolin, uh, that all were starters for us last year as well. And those guys are, you can tell, trying to uh, take the reins and, and be leaders uh, with the team this year. Um, and then we've got a lot of newcomers to the team. You know, we've got uh, one player from junior college, Cody Braden, who's doing really well. We have Drew Dempsey, who transferred from DePaul. He's a sophomore. He's doing well. And then we've got a lot of returning players that are really competing for playing time and, and uh, uh, working hard practice, uh, which is a great sign saying that, you know, we're going to be competitive for the rest of the year as well. Um, so we, really we have 31 players on the men's team, 26 players on the women's team. Everyone on both teams is working very hard at practice. Well, let's talk a little bit about the conference, uh, and I didn't know that. I didn't know it was a great soccer conference. Yeah. Uh, I got to do the, some of the football preseason stuff, but, I, you know, I follow the other sports, you know, and, you know, it is a very good conference. Yeah. Uh, who's, who's the really big games to look forward to the remainder of the season before you uh, get into the, you know, meat and potatoes of the playoffs and that type of thing? Um, on the men's side, uh, 
the when we came into the conference three years ago, the defending national champion in Division Two right. was Northern Kentucky, who yeah. was in the conference. Then they moved up to Division One. So we had that was actually our first conference game on the road. It's a great way to start, Kentucky. isn't it? It was a great way to start, and then. Um, but we've had uh, Rockhurst, who's our travel partner. When we right. go play someone on the road, they go play another team, and then we have different opponents Friday, Sunday. Um, they're doing really well, and they're always a rival that we play the last game of the regular season is against Rockhurst. Um, this year will be at Rockhurst. So that's always a fun game. Um, but Lewis in Chicago has been to the Division II Final Four. Um, Wisconsin Parkside has a lot of tradition. Um, and then uh, Drury is always a competitive game. We've played them in the last three years. We've gone to overtime with them all three years. Our first game in the GLBC ever, actually, home game, was against Drury, and we beat them in a dramatic overtime win. So, um, you know, there's a lot of teams in the conference that are great. UMSL in Missouri-St. Louis has huge tradition in Division II. Um, and Quincy has great tradition as well. So a lot of teams that have had a lot of soccer success over the last 20 years, and uh, it's a lot of fun playing those teams week in, week out. Uh, you know, looking uh, to the future, you know, you, you really look at your girls, and I, I, was follow I have followed you uh, since we've gone to Vision 2. They've been very solid and been able to play with the big, big women in town. Yeah, you know, um, uh, our men and women were both nationally ranked at one time you during bet. the season. The women then went on to be, make the national tournament. Uh, our conference on the women's side, it's so competitive that the most teams who can have qualify for the national tournament from a conference is five. And with Truman State coming into the conference um, this year, Kentucky Wesleyan out, um, that makes six teams in our conference that actually qualified for the NCAA tournament last year. So somebody who made it last year right. isn't going to make it this right. year. Um, and there doesn't have to be. When we could have only one team from our conference is the, the minimum. Right. But there's no saying we had to have five. So, um, so that's how competitive it is. Uh, and the women definitely have more than held their own. Well, Coach, it's really great having you on. I hope you'll be back again. Good luck in your season. You know, you're going to get really after it here before long. Oh, yeah. and you'll be playing a lot of those people we oh, just yeah. talked about. So yep. good luck to you and both teams. And, again, we'll, we'll be back. We're inside the Cardinal Playbook in the next segment. Tanner's is new to Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Their happy hour specials every day are served from two different areas, and the patio section is now enclosed for meetings or other gatherings. Join us home football Saturdays for the Cardinal Live postgame show with head football coach Jared Cruzy, and come in any day for food specials in the spacious dining area. Tanner's of Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Cardinal fans, welcome back to the final segment this week of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And uh, Coach, why don't you talk a little bit about your uh, players of the week? You only give it's, players a week when you get a W, yeah. so they're all smiling. You know, it's uh, this is something we started a couple years ago. Is you know we used to give them out every game when you when you have a young team in your first couple years, and you know our expectations are higher now, so we only do them after wins. And you know that's honestly from a player standpoint, that's when they want them. They, there's not a player out there that oh, really feels real good about being the player of a game or you know on e either side of the ball well, you can start a tradition right there yeah so uh yeah this week we we had some guys to pick from which was you know some some weeks you go into it and you're trying to figure out maybe well who can we give it to oh, yeah. you know we had a bunch of different nominations this week and starting out offensively you know we talked about them a little bit already but sean sean had the best game he's played since he's been here and you know as a fan, you might not see all those things, but he graded out as high as he's ever graded in, in the few mistakes he had were him getting himself out of a, a jam. That, that, and I can't be more proud of him and uh, the growth that we saw in him last week and the maturity and just who he's become as a player. And, and again, for him, you know, we're looking to see that every week. Uh, so he had a great game. Our receiving core as a group, because of how they? the game went, you know, blocked their tail ends off and, and uh, you know, 
and they did some good things in the passing game as well. And Chris Smith had a nice breakaway touchdown down he's the coming. field. And there was guys uh, blocking for him down the field. Like and guys working. Doing. And uh, you know Thomas Cook, you know was a nominee was a nominee for the um, conference player of the week this week. And and you know just was really close to getting it. Uh, he probably was the second pick this week for the conference player of the week, and he had a great stat line. And I think. Uh, 178 yards on 23 carries and three touchdowns and a couple more yeah, catches. Yeah, we take that every Saturday. Yeah, that's a pretty good day at the office. Yeah, we you know, take that every eight, Saturday. Eight, nine yards of carry you somewhere bet. in that ballpark. And, you know, he had if he was sitting here now, the one thing he would talk about was, you know, he put, he put the ball on the ground one time, which he felt, you know, worse about than anybody out there. And, and so he's striving to, to, to have that perfect game like, like we all do. And uh, so that was, if there was a negative with him, that was the only one. But... Boy, his positives were, were huge on Saturday. The guy we went with, and, and you know, I could talk on and on about how we were up front and at tight end because we did some really good things there. Again, I think it's maybe the best offensive game we've had since we've been here. But uh, we went with Glenn Whitney for our offensive player of the week this week. He was tremendous uh, in, in, the, in the blocking guy. schemes, He's in the protections, in running the ball. They didn't want, they didn't want to see 21 you know, as the fourth quarter went on. They were, he was you pounding. know, he was – banging and pounding and, and got some tough first downs and, and can't say enough about you know the role he's taking and the job he's doing right now so that's who we went with offensively uh in special teams i know you talked to coach weigel a lot about some of the stuff that went on there uh you know and and the one thing and he may have talked about he may not have the guy we went with there and, and warren hits a big field goal to really put the game you know out of reach for he's the other team him. and hits a 42 yarder under pressure and and Zane had a great day punting the ball, and and uh, but the guy we went with is a guy that just keeps coming every single play in the effort that he gives. Had a great week defensively last week and this week. We he was another guy we could have chosen as the defensive player of, of the week, but we went with Jack Bissonette. He had an unbelievable block PAT. He's which a football That point ended up being kid. huge in the game and did really good on kickoff and everything he's involved in right now. He's doing a tremendous job. And then defensively, again, I talked about Jack and him having another good game. And, and uh, Jimmy DeStefano was uh, the conference player of the week, the defensive player of the week. Catching on to that backer position. Yeah, exactly. And, he, you know, he had a tremendous stat line, 12-some tackles and two-and-a-half tackles for a loss and, you know, a sack and you know, fumble recovery. And he was, you know, he played a lot of plays. He played 70 plays. Jack played 78 and there were 78 plays total. So those guys were out there and had a lot of opportunities, but they made the most of them, and, and uh, that was great to see. So it, it's nice to be in a situation when we get to talk about players of the week. That means that, that good things happen. You bet. Let's talk a little bit now. Six o'clock start. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, you know, after this big win, you know, we had a great crowd for the first ball. Yeah, no doubt good. about it. You it know, uh, hopefully everybody will be back. Six o'clock, you know, uh, Looking forward to it, but McHenry, uh, Coach, I'd have to tell you, and we talked on the phone on the way trip, I'll remember this vividly after the McHenry game yeah. last year, yeah. and I talked to you when we were coming home. Uh, I thought it was one game we had an opportunity to win. Yeah. And uh, they had great backs. They, they ran the old type of uh, yeah, wing, tee, wing, yeah, wing tee stuff. Yeah. But uh, how is this new coach going to be different over there, McHenry? You know, he does a great job. He's, you know, he's from uh, – Colorado State Pueblo and they were number one in the country most of the year last yeah. year as offensive coordinator there and, and takes his really first nails. head coaching job and is doing a tremendous job. Just, you just watch him on film and you can tell, uh, you know, offensively, defensively, and special teams are well coached. And, you know, there's still some guys, you know, on the staff from last year that are still there and uh, they'll be difficult. They're, they've recruited well too. They got some, it appears they got some transfer guys in and They've got a little bit different look than they were maybe a year ago, but still some of the same physical toughness that we saw from them a year ago. Yeah. We're going to have to go They're out down. and play a really good. Th this will be the this is the best team we've we've seen uh, on film this year. So uh, you know we'll have to to make sure we get ourselves healthy and get ourselves right uh, and be ready to go uh, on at six o'clock. Yeah, I just want to tell all the Cardinal fans we will be kicking it off at six o'clock here. At William Jewell College, and also this will be the first uh, uh, time we'll have the opportunity to go to Tanner's here in town, which will be one of our sponsors. Yeah, and coach will have the coaches show uh, right after the game over yep. there. I know you enjoy that as much as I do. I really yeah. enjoy the time afterwards, uh, sharing you know, feel, feeling a right. part of it and visiting with you after a ball game, and hopefully we'll have something to celebrate over there. At yeah, Tanner's amen. And, and, and the folks that come out to that, I know last year those those environments, especially after a win, there's nothing like being together and, right. and celebrating together. So that'll be fun.
Well, hopefully we'll see all the Cardinal fans of both places after the Big W uh, this uh, coming week. That's the, uh, this edition of Inside the Cardinal Playbook.